What's up YouTube and in today's video we're gonna be creating a spell system with custom spells that gonna cost mana. If you like the content that you're seeing consider subscribing and like the video. So let's get started. We'll start off by listening for the world initialize event which will allow us to run scripts after you join the world or hit slash reload. We need that to initialize some variables for the player to keep track of the player's current and maximum mana. We'll do that using dynamic properties. But for that we have to call the property registry method from the void initialize callback. That method needs a dynamic properties definition, which will basically hold our dynamic properties, which is a class which we also have to import of course. Now we can define our custom properties, which we will just call max mana and current mana. Now we can finally register our properties to the player. With the property registry object we can decide on whether we want to register the properties to the world or an entity. And in this case, we want to register them to the player. So what we have to do is, we have to use the register entity type dynamic properties method from the property registry object and pass in our dynamic properties definition and the player Minecraft entity type, which is another constant that we have to import. So basically what this is, is basically a scoreboard which keeps track of our current and maximum mana even if we reload the world, which is why they are called the dynamic properties. Theoretically, we could already set and get our dynamic properties using the built-in functions, but they look really ugly and get annoying over time. To combat this, we're gonna add our own properties to the player itself. We're gonna use object.define properties with the player prototype, which basically contains every property of the player. After we import the player class, which we're accessing the prototype of, we can start adding our custom properties to the player. I will add two properties to the player, one called max mana c and the other one called current mana c. I also have them underscored with a underscore c to distinguish them from normal properties. Before we do anything else, let's set a few defaults for our custom properties. So when they're not set, it will default to that value. So I'm just gonna use two constant variables, both of them containing a number value. In that case, our max mana is gonna be 100 and our current mana is gonna be 0. I will start off by giving our max mana property a getter. Basically, a getter is a function which is being called whenever the property is being called. In that case, we will just return the dynamic property, max mana, and if it doesn't exist, we will just uh, return the default max mana. Now we can already read the value, but to set the value, we are gonna need a setter, which is why we use the set function, with the number being the first argument, to set the dynamic property to the number. We can also apply this principle for the current mana. But for the setter, I did something different, because there I used math.min, which will basically return the smallest number out of the two numbers here. This makes the mana never overflow over its maximum value. So your mana can never be over your maximum mana. And that's actually it for a custom player property setup. We actually still have a problem though. Because our editor doesn't show our custom properties. To fix that we can use the TypeScript typings file. So we only want our custom properties to work on the player. That player is part of the add minecraft server module, which is why we declare it here first. Now we can actually add our custom properties to the player. In this case I said that the max mana and the current mana are numbers. To combine this typings file with the official typings file, we're just gonna import the original module. And now whenever we try to access that property, it will tell us that this is a number. Let's make the mana display in our action bar. For that I will just use the system.runInterval function, which is the new system.run schedule, and set their action bar to the current and maximum mana. And also, every 20 ticks we will add one mana to the player's current mana, which if you remember will never overflow because of the method min that we used earlier. To finish the display, let's import system. Now we only need some way to handle the mana, and for that I'm gonna create a class called mana items. Inside that class I'm gonna create a static list which will contain every item that uses mana. I will also add a method that allows us to add a mana item to that list. To add an item to the list, we only need the item ID, the cost, and a callback for what should be executed every time you cast a spell. I will also create a JS doc which will basically describe what this function does. I have to kinda think ahead of here, because I need to know what the callback should contain. And in that case, our event callback should contain the item stack, the player, if the spell was casted successfully, and the cost. And the return value of that callback 
will just be if the event should be cancelled or not. I know this sounds very confusing, but it will make sense when we continue the development. I will also create a custom type to describe what the item list contains. And now we can just say that the item list is an array of mana items. Now we can actually start implementing the system that's gonna handle this. Since we want to make the spell activate on a right click, we have to use the before item use event here. And inside that event I will just check if a player used that item. And now we will just go through every mana item and find the mana item that has the same ID as the item that we've used. And if we can't find an item, we'll just return. And now we'll get to the complicated part. Because now we're gonna call the callback from our mana item. And this first parameter to the callback will pass in an object containing the item, the player, if the spell has succeeded and the cost of the spell. And we'll also take the return value of that callback that we can use later to cancel the event. And now we can start applying abilities to a certain weapon. For that I will just call the add mana item function with the item ID, the cost of the spell and an event callback that gets executed whenever the spell is casted. Now we can deconstruct the properties of the event callback and do something with them. So let's check if the player had enough mana. And if so, we're just gonna spawn a sheep with the name Jeb and remove the mana that the item costs. And the last thing that we need to do is to send an error message whenever we don't have enough mana. And we will also return true to cancel the event. To cancel the event on a certain return value, we just need to check if the cancel was successful and cancel the event correspondingly. And now whenever we right click in game, a new sheep will spawn. And that's actually it with the video. If you guys enjoyed it, consider subscribing and bye!